Hello, everyone. This is Danny Bob Rowe, president of AIM Dental Marketing, welcoming you to this first installment of the Practice Perfection Web-Based Education Series for 2021. I am honored to have as our presenter today, Mr. Robert Klaus. The typical dental practice fails to convert upwards of 65% of prospective patient inquiries. Many also fail to follow up on messages left by prospective patients in a timely way. With the right solution, a practice can literally triple new patient flow without investing an extra dollar in marketing. The right solution, consistent and accurate telephone communication support that duplicates the culture and professionalism of your practice so that even if team members do not possess the requisite selling skills or are unable to prioritize new patient opportunities, the practice can nonetheless thrive. Today, Rob will provide an overview of the pros and cons of scheduling via phone call, online scheduler, web form, and live chat, as well as the secrets to making every new patient call a kept appointment. Before we get started, I remind you that Practice Perfection webcasts run for around 90 minutes. Attendance at this event entitles you to receive one and a half hours of continuing education credit with the compliments of Rob and AIM Dental Marketing. Shortly following the webcast, you will be emailed a brief survey and quiz to complete to receive your CE, again, at no cost to you. And now, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome to the Practice Perfection stage, Mr. Robert Kloss. Take it away, Rob. All right. Thanks, thanks a lot, Danny. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity that you've given us to, to partner with you uh, to be here uh, and uh, share some of the uh, insights that that I have. Um, my team and I have been working for uh, a little over six years uh, with dental practices all across the U.S. and Canada to help them uh, answer the phone more often and better and become more available to, to their patients, uh, more available to their prospective patients. Um, as you are very focused on marketing for dental practices, um, Danny, uh, you know, we wanted to cover um, a lot of the reasons why it just is really critical to have a great handle on converting new patients through the phone, through your website. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the ways that you can help ensure that your marketing dollars get the very best return they possibly can. Marketing is about planting seeds. And if your team is not able to nurture those seeds when they spring to life, well, it's not very pretty, is it? Um, there's some pretty obvious things I'm going to say about why you're already investing in, in marketing, why you're spending those dollars. But we'll cover them anyways, just to frame the overall conversation here. Uh, anybody that has experience with maintaining a mailing list of customer addresses can tell you that on average in the U.S., 10 to 15 percent of a list will change every single year. That means that 10 to 15 percent of your customers on average are moving. And maybe they're just moving around the block um, and likely to stay a, a, an existing customer patient. But even a move of five to 10 miles can be enough to upset the apple cart. So if a conservative five to 10% of your current patients are dropping off through new fa no fault or reason uh, related to you, uh, you absolutely need to find ways to replace those in order to continue with healthy growth for your practice. So the positive patient experience that you and your team provide is of course creating a flow of referrals from friends, families, neighbors, uh, but pulling in even other new patients is the focus of your marketing initiatives. So what I'll cover are some elements about increasing your availability to patients, prospective patients, and because I run a service that's focused on helping dental practices do this, I'll talk about things to look for in a prospective partner and also some insights that, that we've gained in answering and scheduling for these past six years. There's a pretty standard classical reference model in marketing that looks like a pyramid. This pyramid describes the addressable public and their relationship to you and your service or product. At the very base of this uh, pyramid is the 30% of the public that is just, they have no interest in your company or your service at all. Above that is another 30% of the public that they might have an interest, but they don't currently have a need for what you offer. 
the next 30% actually do have a need, but for whatever reason, they're not acting on it. And I think in the dental industry, we're all very well aware of people who have needs, but are not acting on them. So above that is 7% of the public that need your services uh, and would be open to engaging you, but they're just not in a mode of actually acting on that now. So the final 3% are those customers who know they need your service, and they're now actively working to purchase, and in your case, to schedule an appointment. Your marketing efforts have all been in service of moving that, moving potential customers from lower in the pyramid to that topmost piece. Somebody who knows both about you and your practice with the knowledge that you can help them. Those marketing seeds that have been planted, of course, you have to do it consistently over time, do have an impact and help to make sure that prospective new patients are delivered to your doorstep. But clearly, it's not enough. You still have to get these prospects into your schedule and into the chair, right? A challenge that you encounter with marketing is that you don't know exactly when it will produce results. When will the new patient call or visit your website? Now there's lots of different marketing channels that you might be employing from direct mail and postcards, radio advertisements, banner ads, search ads, social media, all designed to give awareness of who you are. But when during the morning, afternoon, evening, or weekend does your target see that and when do they respond to it? From our perspective, between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., and even on Saturday, it's reasonable to expect that a consumer would respond to a marketing message and have the expectation that they can be served. If you don't or are unable to respond to the customer's inquiry, what happens? Consumers are just not always in that 3% mode of acting on a need. And when they are in that mode, they're trying to take care of that need right then. Right. So, so if it's not now, you, it'll be somebody else, right, Rob? That's right. Absolutely, Danny. So a voicemail, well, it's not always going to work. Sometimes people are going to leave them, but it's definitely not 100% of the time. And in that case, that means you're just leaving things on the table. So finding ways to increase your availability when you have conversion opportunities is key. Your marketing has created brand awareness. That is why you have the opportunity. But most likely, you don't have brand loyalty. And that's why it's likely that the customer may look for an alternative in that moment. So there's four main channels from our perspective where conversion from prospect to scheduled patient can occur. Uh, this your marketing um, spending and efforts have gone to bring the consumer to one of these four points in order to be able to uh, become a customer of your dental practice. Uh, phones, online scheduling, uh, web forms, and live chat or text. If you spend any time at the front desk of a dental practice, you know this is true. New technology certainly plays a role, uh, but significant, significant volumes of current and new patient uh, interactions still take place over the phone. And I would certainly encourage any practice to find ways to make themselves as available as possible. So having as many or all of these channels is key. Online scheduling has come a long way in the past few years and the patient experience is improving. Looking at the 200 individual practices that our team serves, 62% of them offer online scheduling. To be frank though, there, there really just are some limitations to these tools still. In my own experience, working with hundreds of practices and dealing with the scheduling needs and desires that lead to the rules of scheduling can mean that some of these templated scheduling blocks for online tools don't always work out well, especially if you're a busier practice. You certainly would not want a prospective customer interacting with a self-service scheduling tool, being rebuffed by insurance questions, and a potential lack of appointment slots. In fact, you can see that while online scheduling has an impact, many practices find that fewer than 10% of the overall appointments that they see are scheduled online. And this is drawn from from our uh, surveys of our existing customers. So 65% of our practices see less than 10% of their appointments scheduled through an online scheduler. 
just really underscores the need for a practice to make available other channels through which patient appointments can be scheduled and conversion opportunities realized. To, to illustrate that, uh, what we wanted to do is understand how dental practices manage and focus on conversion opportunities outside of online scheduling. So our team engaged in a study. To start, we invented a man from whole cloth, Frost, James Frost. Affectionately known in our office as Jimmy Frost, uh, we did a survey of group dental practices in the United States, making requests for follow-up and appointments through web forms, one of the four main conversion channels. You've spent money, you've gotten people to click through, they're on your website, there's a form. We wanted to understand how reliable it is to get a response and in what form those responses can come to us. James had his own email, he had his own textable phone number and voicemail box. So to an outside observer, Jimmy appears to be somebody in that 3%, a motivated consumer of a practice's services. If you, in your practice, have a web form on your website, do you know what the process is for responding to that? Who is within the office is responsible for that? And what are the expectations for making the response? All critical things to know and to document. What we found was significant leakage in this conversion channel, with 45% of offices just not even responding at all to the inquiry. These are folks who are asking for an appointment and getting no response at all. And simply calling back once, the very lowest hurdle to clear, was only done 65% of the time. Of those, 63% made only a single call back to Mr. Frost, and a fifth took two whole days to even make that first call back. Clearly a lot of room for improvement in this process. So how can you make sure that your process uh, works way better than what we found at a ton of dental offices. First, you have to make sure you have a documented process with clear ownership within the front desk team. You must name the person who's responsible for dealing with web leads, even if they're not always the person that's making the actual follow-up. Second, you have to make the process trackable and transparent. So it can be as simple as creating a spreadsheet that has the lead information entered, the date and the time it arrived, and then checkoffs for when you make various uh, contacts out to the lead. And obviously at the end, was it a successful conversion or not? Gives you the ability to see it over time, to ensure and have accountability uh, that the process is being executed, like you've defined. Uh, and then you can tweak things to, to make improvements if the conversion is not what you're expecting it to be. Uh, third, make the return communication a priority. Call back within an hour at the most. This is a motivated customer looking to do business with you. So calling back two days later probably means they've found an alternative. Finally, there's ways to employ technology to really increase the likelihood of reaching the customer. Many practice communication systems uh, leverage the ability to send text messages. So use that as soon as possible when you get the lead. Text the requester with an invitation to chat back but also let them know that you'll be calling them and from what number you're calling from, if it's different from the text number that you're sending from. What that does is increase the likelihood that they'll answer. So on many smartphones these days, the phone itself will look for names and history in emails and text messages so that when you call, it can display that to the customer and greatly increase the likelihood that they'll answer. Some of those elements are definitely easier said than done. The real reason why some of those web form leads didn't get called back isn't because of nefarious office staff that are totally shirking their duties. It's much more likely that they have other competing priorities for their attention. Checking the email for web leads is just lower on their list because of the other tasks that they have to deal with. So outside help can be utilized to help ensure there's a focus on this process and help you to reduce the leakage. So as I mentioned earlier, the phone is still the critical pathway through which the vast majority of appointments will be scheduled. Not answering the phone means you're not available to your customers and to your prospective customers, maybe more importantly at times. 
availability in answering the phone is an industry-wide challenge uh, for dental practices. Surveys from uh, a variety of different sources within the industry indicate that 30 to 40 percent of calls to an office front desk go unanswered. And now, do some of those folks call back? Do some leave voicemail messages? Absolutely. But are they your new prospective customers? Remember again that all of those marketing efforts that you made created brand awareness and most likely have not yet achieved brand loyalty. Your existing customer will call back or leave a voicemail because you do have that loyalty, but prospects, it's less likely. So what can you do to increase your answer rate? I, you know, I, I think at the very start of it, the top is uh, documenting and articulating and communicating your own desire to your team uh, that's the value um, that answering the phone is prioritized. Articulating to your team the value of answering and the impact it has on the long-term health of your practice. Knowing things like what the production value for a new patient is in the first 30 or 90 days uh, and being able to communicate why that matters to keeping the practice growing in a healthy way. So making sure that you're communicating to your team the priority of answering the phone. The reality though is your team cannot answer all the calls that come into the practice. There are breaks, there are lunches. Eventually the team does go home at the end of the day. Your customers and prospective customers are busy people. Uh, they'll call when they can. And oftentimes that might be when your team is unavailable. So some practices will rotate a cell phone that gets taken home. There's definitely some HR issues to be aware of with that approach and ensuring that you're appropriate, appropriately compensating the team for that kind of work is important. But it's a way to capture uh, folks that are calling uh, maybe in the hour before or after um, you close uh, and preventing that from just going to voicemail. Um, ensuring that you're correct staff, you, you are correctly staffed. You have the right number of people in the front desk is important. Uh, being open as many hours as possible is cr crucial too. Uh, staggering lunch breaks to happen in shifts with a clear passing of the torch for responsibility of phone duties can help. Lunchtime is often when your customer has the free time to engage with you and to call and schedule an appointment. So if everybody's leaving the front desk at the same time at lunch, there's a big hole in the day uh, and you're, you're missing opportunities to get new patients on your schedule. If you're large enough, um, you may have the means and it may make sense for you to build your own internal call center. Um, that can start small with just a couple of people. Um, and the benefits here are a dedicated focus on the phone. That team is not juggling all the tasks that are placed upon the front desk. They aren't worried about checking in and checking out patients, running down treatment plans, and jamming the printer, et cetera all the things that pull them away and distract them from answering the phone. Uh, and even when, when they answer, by being able to focus on that task at hand, which is critical, and focus on conversion, for, focus on positive communication. Um, and there's other benefits that you can take too if you're building your own internal call center in terms of there, there are patterns to when incoming phone calls have a higher volume and when there's less. Uh, the call center can be making outbound calls to schedule um, non-compliant hygiene. Uh, they can be working to do insurance verification during those slower hours. Uh, but it is, it is tough. Building your own call center entails configuring a pattern of work uh, that's really quite different from what a typical dental practice looks like. You've got to hire, train, and supervise in a totally different way than you do for, for an office staff and certainly for clinical staff. One that's focused on call handling and scheduling. And some of that might be easier than training for a full bevy of front office tasks, but some of it's more challenging, especially the supervision and management. Auditing calls uh, is something that has to happen on a recurring basis for this to work. Um, so part of that is developing a rubric um, for different elements of the call. You know, how is the greeting? Uh, how is the call structured? Um, did your staff person maintain control of the call um, and, and being able to score people on that. Um, and it needs to happen on a regular basis. So listening to calls um, and reviewing them with your staff, um, certainly no less than monthly. Um, 
but preferably weekly. Finally, there, there's options to partner with an entity like my team. We specialize in answering calls on behalf of dental practices and, and working to schedule appointments for you. Um, so how, how does working with a call center partner actually work? Um, there's a number of elements. So I'll step, step through a few ways to utilize the service. Um, and this, you know, this can be at your preference, depending on your specific practice's needs. Um, so rollover calls ring at the practice front desk a set number of times. And if they're unanswered or if your line is totally busy, then the call would roll to the call center. Uh, most of our clients settle somewhere between three to five rings of the phone. So somewhere between 18 to 30 seconds from when the, uh, the phone started ringing, essentially. Uh, and if the staff cannot answer, then it gets turned over to us. So with that you model, question, you know, Rob? yeah, certainly, Danny. Just uh, if I guess this would be at the uh, at the client's end. But do you recommend that after, when after hours they just, uh, if their system can accommodate this, that they just have zero rings when someone calls? You know, rather have it oh, ring three to five times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you know they're not there. Yeah. Because that might just be the excuse that the spouse needs to tell, to tell uh, his wife, I tried to call the dentist, and they, you know, it just but kept they didn't ringing. answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, absolutely. You're you're right. And so, I mean, that that is it. So there is a difference between the phone system configuration between phone rollover and after hours, and, and uh, phone systems definitely have a, a variety of different options. Um, most of them can be programmed both ways. So with rollover, um, setting that up three to five rings, whatever it is, it really takes the guesswork out of the day for your team. Uh, unexpected breaks, lunch, um, things just get, get really slammed at the front desk. They don't have to think about it. Uh, the calls are just going to roll over. Uh, but yeah, after hours, that's the, that's the other, you know, setting that can be often programmed in. So at five o'clock, um, calls will just immediately start ringing at the call center. So you don't have that 18 to 30 seconds that's going on. So good question. Thank you. Uh, a couple other patterns that can be utilized. Um, so with the first two, generally the call center is handling the full range of calls that would come into your practice. So it's not just scheduling calls, um, handling things like appointment confirmations, uh, requests for information, uh, they need a fax of uh, records somewhere, rescheduling type calls. Those all make up a, a significant portion of the calls that would be handled in that rollover type of capacity and, and after hours. Um, so other options can involve uh, just forwarding your marketing tracking numbers to the call center. And that will have the impact that a much higher percentage of calls that the call center receives will be scheduling related. Um, it's important to recognize that not all calls will be. Um, I guarantee you that even, even your staff sometimes Google your practice's name uh, and then click the first result that comes up, which is typically paid search and it's forwarded through a marketing tracking number. So uh, not every call that comes through marketing lines is in fact a, a new patient, uh, but it does really uh, impact the, the percentage of them that would be. Uh, and for most of the customers that utilize our service, they are very focused on scheduling. Uh, and so being able to um, kind of whittle down the number of calls to be these um, these valuable calls, uh, this is one way to accomplish that. So, you know, if, if somebody clicks on a Google ad, um, it's going to come straight to the call center. Another option would be to incorporate a phone tree on your phone system. Just ask real quick, very simple. If you'd like to schedule a new appointment or your new patient, press one. For everything else, please stay on the line press one, that would go off to the call center. Um, again, that's sending these scheduling related calls to a team that's totally focused on answering the phone, A, making sure that happens, uh, and being super professional and friendly, uh, and then converting a potential customer into a scheduled appointment. Uh, so a few questions that if you were considering uh, um, utilizing a third-party service that you should definitely have answers to before you proceed. Um, does the service have direct access to my schedule? Uh, having a live voice answering service is great, and there's message-taking services that are pretty ubiquitous across the country. 
Uh, but really how much value beyond voicemail does that offer? Uh, for, for dentists, having an answering service with access to your live schedule uh, so patients can be served, appointments created in real time, that's really what drives the return on investment for a service like this and helps to maximize that marketing ROI. So, you know, voicemails, answering service messages, they all need to be responded to many hours later. Uh, does the service have dental experience? So if the answer is no, definitely consider other options. I mean, you, you know yourself, if you bring new people in off the street into your practice, um, the challenge of, of getting people up to speed. The language of dentistry can be complex and having a non-dental specialist answering the phone absolutely can be a liability. Uh, general answering services take calls for, for just all types of industries and businesses. And so potentially somebody that's taking a, a call for a muffler shop or a handyman and then your practice on the ne next call, well, that, that can be quite stark. Uh, even medical specific services can really struggle with the intricacies of a dental office and the scheduling that's involved with filling a practice's schedule. Um, what, what onboarding steps? You know, understanding and asking for the documents related to onboarding uh, in advance can tell you a ton about the quality of the service that will be provided by the questions asked. So key points to keep in mind when you're looking at that is, are there industry-specific verbiage that show a high-level understanding of what would be needed for a dental office? Are there questions being asked about insurance or in-office savings plans? Are the right questions being asked regarding different scheduling philosophies, such as provider time, block scheduling, rock, sand, water, double booking. And if these aren't being asked, then you need to ask yourself, why not? And you know, how is this team gonna be able to serve the nuances of my practice? Are calls recorded? And how, how can uh, myself or my team access those recordings? Uh, trust is just critical. Um, you know, you're, you're putting in a partner's hand a relationship with both your customers and your prospective customers. Um, and so you have to be, you have to have an assurance uh, of what the patient experience is, that calls are being handled to the standard you expect, and that the company stands behind their service. So it makes it vital to know what access you will have to your calls and how you can independently verify the quality of calls and how much transparency is involved. So if a company is not providing that minimum level of access, ask yourself why, and would you be comfortable knowing your calls are being handled with no insider ability to verify it within your office? Uh, what are the agreement terms? Are you locked into a long-term uh, commitment? Um, as with any agreement, you wanna know what, what commitment is required of the office, and if you have flexibility, if the service does not work as expected. While commitment isn't automatically a disqualifying feature, many answering services feature no long-term agreements and clear pricing. So if the pricing isn't clear, seems like there's hidden fees, or the term is for a year or more, there might be a better fit available. Knowing the hours that uh, calls will be answered uh, obviously impacts your decision. Uh, it's a question you want to make sure you know up front. Some services are 24-7, while others use a more strategic approach to different hours to accomplish the stated goals. For example, my team, we answer from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday, and 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. Um, and that's by design. I go back to what I said at the very beginning, the expectation that a consumer has between 7 a and 7 p. Um, you know, that's... They're on their way into work. They got home and opened the mail. Uh, they're on their lunch break. Um, those are the times when we see uh, scheduling activity most likely to take place. Uh, so that's where we look to serve those hours across the, the continent. Is the service HIPAA compliant? Um, seems pretty basic, but definitely a must have. Um, any company that you are looking to partner with should include a business associate agreement as a standard part of their agreement. I am willing to share detailed HIPAA-related compliance, things like data security plans as requested. So, you know, don't hesitate to ask those kind of questions. Uh, and if you don't get solid answers, you should definitely um, 
you should definitely ask more questions. Uh, in addition, you need to know and understand how the company plans to communicate messages back and forth with your office team. Uh, so in general, email on its own is not HIPAA compliant without kind of de deeper technical integration with your office. So, so be really wary of claims to the contrary. In general, uh, a secure messaging portal is the best communication medium for any healthcare organization. Knowing where the service is, so um, you know, and, and how they're managed, um, very very important to understand. Um, is this an uh, onshore, you know, or is it offshore? Uh, are are the folks who are taking calls at home are they in an office setting? If they're remote, you know, what steps are taken to ensure that HIPAA compliance? Um, are they in a, a environment that's free of distraction and quiet and background noise, all that kind of stuff? So definitely questions to to ask. Did you have so Rob, you're uh, you you haven't uh, the uh, the pandemic has that thrown some some wrinkles into the uh, you know your ability to maintain quality and, and eliminate distraction. I, you know I think there's there's been moments of time where it it has uh, has done that. You know back in in March we went from 100% everybody's in an office in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Um, to everybody being at home, uh, to in, in order to keep answering the phone and keep our business open, and, and also to help our practice customers, um, as you know, everybody was whipsawed around. First we're closing, then we're reopening, but no wait. Two weeks later, we're, <laughs> we're we got to stay closed for another couple of weeks. How many people are getting scheduled and rescheduled? You know, we played a role in all of that, and and I I'm think sure. to your point about distraction. I'm sure that that first couple of weeks, absolutely. But what we found was uh, our ability to really monitor um, our callers uh, and and listen to calls, uh, provide them with tools, provide them with expectations. It has worked out really well. So we we currently have a mix of both in office staff and folks that are at home, uh, and we continually uh, monitor uh, and. Uh, and look for those kinds of things. And certainly we have the infrastructure with our technology and uh, computer equipment for encryption and uh, security along those lines. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know that we had a challenge, just had to advise our, our health partners uh, to, to just invest in a cordless ha headset because most of the better ones have uh, ambient noise dampening, which means the, oh, the yeah. crying children Absolutely. and the barking dogs. They're still yeah. there, and you're going to have to learn not to be distracted by it, but at least the people at the other end of the call don't have to hear it. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, that's something that for, for us, having those kind of high-quality headsets was something that, you know, that's if you're on the phone all day, that that's kind of a, a baseline thing that you do, and it, it works at home and it works in the office. The must-have. I agree. Whether you're a pro Absolutely. or a professional or not, I just I've been coaching and advising about that for years, cradling a handset between your – Ear and your shoulder. It, yeah. It's not, not your, a good, your chiropractor. Not a good look. Chiropractor That's right. Your chiropractor it, would like it. Yeah. You, you, you're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, but I think part of it too, there, there are services that are offshore and there's going to be a cost differential for that. So, understanding that it can fit into, I mean, I think it can work. Um, both types of things can work. Um, but we're, we're totally onshore in the U.S. So. And I think the other element of it is, uh, are are the people who are taking calls, are they your employees or are they contractors? Everybody that, that answers our phone are employees that we hired, did background checks on, and trained to do this. Um, it's not a gig economy type of role. It's it's they're they're full employed. So um so just thinking about what the return on investment, uh, obviously with any service that your practice invests and you want to make sure the ROI is there and, and is positive. Um, so making it sure an answering service can also schedule is, is pretty vital. Uh, you'll know generally, um, you know, how many new patients are getting scheduled by your service in a month. Um, and that helps you to understand. If you know what your new patient production values are in a 30, 60, 90 year uh, time frame, then you'll know what that return on investment is. So, Single offices average uh, spending between three to five hundred dollars a month on a service with us. 
um, you can certainly be differentiated by a variety of factors. So, um, you know, don't take that as, you know, an exact number, but that's kind of where people typically fall. Uh, and they generate an additional 10 times in terms of production return on investment. So the scheduling service can be a revenue generator. And you get the added benefit, not only of scheduling new patients, but you're serving your existing patients better in real time. Uh, so a few insights that we have uh, with practices, um, you know, part of our onboarding practice, uh, process is asking a lot of questions. Um, and we really try to understand what it is they're looking for in terms of a call center partner. Um, so what, what do our customers say about why they're using a, a scheduling service? Uh, and the top reasons are, are really the big deal, you know, adding new patients that you would otherwise miss out on, but also, also really depending on how you configure that service, going back to, you know, are you doing rollover, are you doing after hours, are you forwarding just marketing numbers? Um, that can affect the mix, but, um, uh, you know, we can schedule existing patients as well, and that keeps your schedule more full as well. Um, and I think thinking about current patients and, you know, what happens if you don't answer the phone when they call and they do leave voicemails. So do you know as, as a practice manager how many voicemails that your team deals with on a weekly basis? How much time goes into calling people back from voicemails? And the reality is how often does your office's call back result in a voicemail to the patient, creating a, a pretty vicious cycle? Uh, phone tag, uh, and, and really a lot of waste of time. When at the point of time when the patient called, it could have been resolved. They could be on the schedule. So 2020 was hopefully an anomaly in many ways and not seen to be repeated. We just talked a little bit about that, uh, but we're still dealing with the ramifications of COVID on the impact of practice operations. What we see when we're talking to practice is, is a clear desire to have fewer people physically in the confined space of the practice office. And for those staff that are there, we see front desk staff being asked to handle and juggle even more tasks than they were doing pre-COVID. So think about parking lot check-ins, COVID screening, all of that takes time. All that's a drain on your front desk staff time and attention and pulling them even further from being able to focus on talking to the people who are calling your practice. So I'll go through also some statistics and insights uh, related to things that um, things that our customers tell us. Uh, and most of these will have I will relate will have an impact either on how many calls your practice receives uh, or the conversion into appointments from those calls. So this is all information taken from our over 200 individual customer, uh, individual single office customers. So 24% accept Medicaid. So payer acceptance by a practice is a critical driver for inbound call volume. Uh, and so Medicaid is just an easy example to illustrate that point. Medicaid accepting practices can be uh, much more difficult to find in a given geography, which results in higher call volume. Uh, 60 percent of our practices offer a new patient special and this is just another way uh, to help drive con uh, further conversions when you've got somebody on the phone offering a special 72 percent of our clients offer in-office savings plans uh, also a critical tool that can help convert a prospective customer that may not have the ppo plan that you do accept um, and it gives the team on the phone, whoever they might be, a chance to secure a potential fee-for-service patient via the savings plan. And that needs to be a part of your scripting. If you have somebody on the phone um, that, that's inquiring uh, and um, you hear that crestfallen response, if they don't have something that you offer, um, being able to, to circle back, to redirect to an in-office savings plan is critical and can help to drive conversions. So 59% offer free consults. Uh, and having this is a key tool, especially for your higher value services, 
uh, and convert those price shoppers. So it's not a free consult for, for anything, of course, but certainly for, for those higher dollar production values. Uh, and it's not uncommon for someone to call up a practice and ask for the price of a crown. And you know how that game is being played here because they're calling up other practices in your geography. So working to get them within the four walls of your practice where you can take care of them is key. Letting the patient know that you can't diagnose and understand their unique dental needs over the phone is critical. And perhaps a crown isn't what they need after all. Coming in for a free consult is a great way to have your best shot at converting this type of caller. And that also goes into the training that you provide for folks on the phone in your practice, um, making sure that they know how to handle those kinds of questions uh, because they will come up. 57% of our customers employ a form of block scheduling, uh, and that certainly simplifies the task of, of everyone involved in scheduling new appointments and has the benefit of, of helping your providers plan their production day. Uh, if you're working with a remote call center provider, this can greatly reduce the amount of nuance that you need to communicate to that partner to help them schedule, just like you want your schedule to look. Um, it really, it really just simplifies things. Uh, and it typically has the added benefit of making your production day and week more efficient. Uh, from a conversion standpoint, it helps ensure that you're intentional about reserving time slots for new patient evaluations and consults. Uh, and without that key step, you can end up with a situation where it's very difficult to work in new patients on your schedule. In your own practice, keeping an eye on bookout days, which is the time from when a new patient calls to when they're seen is important and something that you should be tracking and keeping an eye on over time. If it's consistently above 14 days, you should be working to understand why that is and seeing if there are changes you can make to impact that number. Uh, adding capacity in your practice or changing how your block scheduling works are two of the first things to consider. Another consideration is which providers are being seen in a new patient first visit. And sometimes I know this is totally out of your control depending on state laws and guidelines, but if you do have the ability to control this and your book out days for new patients is high, consider uh, it as an option to adjust so that you're able to fit more new patients in. Obviously, how long an appointment lasts impacts how many appointment slots you can fit in a production day. Um, there's clearly clinical elements that go into any decision about appointment length, um, but we at Unique do see a range of different appointment lengths, and you can kind of see that here. So about half or 60 minutes or less on a general new patient. The other half range all the way up to two hours. So evaluating that in the context of your overall schedule availability uh, is important. So just to recap a few key impacts on new patient conversion. Uh, number one is making sure there are new patient openings within 14 days. If you're consistently above that number, you most definitely have prospects calling your practice that aren't converting. Um, they're, they're hearing that it's three weeks out, four weeks out, and they're hanging up. Or if they do That's land on your schedule. That's a very good point that you're raising, Rob. Sorry to interrupt, if I may. You're fine. <clears throat> Definitely. You, you know we have our dental marketing dashboard. One of the key mm -hmm. performance indicators we check is the team's batting average, which is how right. well are they doing at converting calls from prospective patients into solid and kept appointments. And uh, Fairly recently, we saw a practice that was consistently scoring, you know, really low. Low is anything below 80% is, is considered low, and they were in the, like, 15, 20%. So I, you know, r rang the alarm, brought that to the attention of the referring consultant. They said they would talk to him. And then I talked also to the uh, the practice owner, and he said, well, that, that may be true, but I do know that, that we're – we lost an associate, and consequently, we can't get any new patients in here for several months. And right. in fact, yeah, it wasn't the team. It was a, there was a there was a, a structural system a systemic issue, which which was much, yeah. far more had to be addressed before you could even address the scheduling. So that is a really a really important component. Convenience uh, in terms of distance and time. 
is is really what it's still all about in terms of getting a new patient in the door. You got to make yeah, sure you're absolutely. You do, and even if somebody takes an appointment that's three or four weeks out, uh, you, you really run the risk uh, that they're also will work to schedule elsewhere, and if they can get in sooner, really they'll will. abandon what they've done with you. So that's true. Yeah, sure. it's definitely something that should be a focus. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, and you hate that. I mean, that's, that's the worst. So. Yeah, that's, uh, that's even worse than not scheduling. Just having a hole. In the schedule yeah. That you know of. Having a hole. That's right. Right. Um, another element is de-emphasizing insurance, uh, you know, and offering in-house discount plans can help with that. I, I mean, the general idea here is not in emphasizing the nuance of in-network, out-of-network on the phone. Rather, work with the broad strokes of basic uh, acceptance and get the appointment scheduled. Um, yeah, I, third, if I may also, yeah, on, on that respect absolutely. too, in, insurance is, dental plans are uh, are the bane of most call handlers' existence. They, you know, <laughs> but what they don't often realize, first of all, is uh, trying to tap dance around the question and or educating the patient on on how unimportant or why you don't participate in a plan is is while you can tell them while you want to then tell them about how great your office is is like as i like to say in my coaching it's like asking someone to listen to you very carefully and not think about a pink elephant you know they, yep. they won't think yep. about anything else and and the, so the fact is you address the the question respect it affordability is important but for all you know the the the, the service the therapy that they're seeking isn't covered by their plan anyway and so to just you know just say we're out of network or to volunteer that information before you've had a chance to find out why the patient is calling because the other thing that's a revelation for people is they're not calling they're really not calling to see if you're in their plan or if you accept their insurance uh, they've got better things to do with their life than than randomly say I I I wonder if this dentist accepts my insurance they're calling because they have a dental need and if you can address respectfully and the, the the insurance question and quote, and then just temporarily and respectfully move it out of the way so you can find out how you can help the caller, then you may well find in the final analysis whether you're in their plan or not isn't even relevant to their need. Right. Right. Yep. I will agree with all of that. Um, third, having that new patient special given an, an incentive to secure that appointment. Everybody loves a deal. So having that is uh, is a great tool. Uh, and then free consults, especially for, for your higher dollar services. Uh, once somebody is within your four walls, you're much more likely to, to turn that into that production that you're looking for. So for, for our service, just a very brief kind of overview of, of what we can do. Um, as I mentioned, we have 200 individual practices that we provide services for across the U.S. and Canada, and then a further 200 plus locations for group dentistry that we uh, answer phones for and schedule on behalf of. Uh, and that's the inbound call support, uh, both rollover after hours, marketing numbers. Uh, we also have outbound calling capabilities working to um, um, you know, reactivate, obviously, uh, hygiene. Uh, schedule, uh, unscheduled treatment, that kind of thing, uh, hosted live web chat, uh, and uh, those web appointment requests. So uh, when things come in uh, via that, it's handled in a structured way that's well-documented, totally repeatable, uh, and can be reported on back to you. Uh, our core principles, um, definitely patient service. Um, when we answer, it's, it's always friendly. Uh, we're always here to, to really try to take care of people in a spirit of hospitality. Uh, and that goes not only for patients, but for you know your staff and team as well. So um, whenever there's an issue, there's an answer. There's somebody to talk to on my team. Uh, there's a way to communicate to us um, if there's a change that needs to happen. Uh, scheduling focus, um, absolutely. We know that that's where the, uh, that's where the value in the service comes from, is making sure that we get people onto the appointment books and uh, into chairs within your practice. And then radical transparency. All of the calls that, that we take are recorded. If we take a web chat, the transcript, all available to you or your staff in a, in a secure web portal 24 hours a day. 
every interaction that we handle, we categorize into whether it's a new patient, a current patient, or other being like a vendor or something like that. Uh, and then we further categorize the, the call outcome. Did we schedule? Did the patient decline? Why did they decline? Did they decline because of insurance, because of schedule availability? Um, were we not able to schedule because we needed guidance from the office? Um, and that can allow us to tweak the service, make sure that it, um, it, we have all of the information uh, at our fingertips. Um, and so it's just, but it's all available to you, you know, so it's, it's not hidden. And so it's that transparency that builds trust. Um, having a detailed onboarding experience. So, I mean, this, this is just something that we've built over five, six years now of working with hundreds of dental practices, understanding the nuances of their scheduling. Um, that experience can allow for a very straightforward process uh, to, to get your, your practice on board and, uh, and knowing the questions to, to ask is often very important. Every practice is a little bit different. Every team has some nuances, um, and chances are we've, we've, we've come across it. So we know the questions to ask. Um, being dental specific, so, you know, I've got 65 employees that do this, and that's all they do. It is dental only. Uh, and so what that means is that's all the training is. It's related to dental. Um, that's what all the quality assurance is, is centers around. You know, are we being accurate? Are we being technically correct? Are we working to convert uh, as we should? And the training in software is in, you know, practice management systems. So um, you don't have to worry about training somebody how to use Open Dental or Dentrix or CareStack, whatever it happens to be. Um, finally, by working with hundreds of practices, we've built our own tools to make sure that uh, we we have that information for our team, our employees, uh, when uh, they need to, at the right at the right spot. So we've built our own software. We call Playbook. It guides our team through interactions. It loads up on their screen automatically when a call comes in, uh, and uh, helps to make sure that they're scheduling accurately. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean that's that's just a, a real benefit for using Unique. Uh, we also provide detailed reporting. Uh, you can see an example of this here. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we categorize the different kinds of calls we get. Um, we categorize the outcome of every call. Um, so we can see you know, what the cost is for our service. We can see how many patients were scheduled and uh, what the resulting production values are. Uh, we can show you when you're getting calls. Are they new patients? Are they current patients? We break down uh, the reasons, um, you know, like I said, if it's not a scheduling related call, what is it? Uh, how are we helping patients? So, so I, you know, that's um, information that I have. Uh, Danny, I again really appreciate the opportunity to share with uh, you and, and your team and your customers uh, the insights that we have um, through our experience. Uh, and, and I hope that the, the information presented is valuable for, for attendees in terms of uh, marketing. Yeah, I want to thank you very much, Rob. And as everyone can see on their screen, uh, you and I agreed to uh, come together and make it as, as easy and, uh, and painless for people to really experience what a truly professional, managed, run and managed call center can can have for a practice's bottom line. So. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but do you want to just walk through what we're uh, what we're willing to do here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so when we set up a new customer, uh, we have an implementation fee. It's typically four hundred ninety-nine dollars. So we've cut that in half to forty-nine fifty. And you know what that goes to is setting up the integration between us. There's a secure connection to your practice to your practice management software, uh, configuring phone systems as needed. And then that process of really building uh, the, the database of information we need in order to schedule correctly. That involves us, um, first off, uh, looking at your schedule. We'll evaluate what you're doing. We can often um, spend some time in practice management and understand 
um, you know, what it is you're doing. From that, we build a questionnaire uh, that we present to you or your office manager, whomever, you know, we're working with to get this get service off the ground. And then we build out that database. Um, we have a monthly platform fee that's typically $99 a month. Uh, we're offering that for $79. Uh, and then the usage is the amount of time that we spend engaged on your behalf um, through an engagement. So normally that's $1.15 a minute. We're offering that for $0.99 cents a minute. And again, that goes to some of the transparency. You'll see the reports, can look at the recordings in order to really understand what drives that. And the reason, obviously, that I'm hosting you is that I've had wonderful experience in working with you. Your, your team are among the most responsive and professional uh, I've ever worked with, and I can say, tell you that I've worked with a lot. In fact, in my yeah. telephone skills coaching, I've, uh, I've gotten away. There's a, there's a couple of slides where I say, well, if you have an answering service, check it often, call it, see if they're practicing yeah. your protocol. Because we had found, yeah. until we came upon you, really, that most services, if they began uh, doing a good job, they eventually uh, lost the quality. And I don't know if that's because they reached their own level of incompetence by taking on too many clients um, or or whatever. But I, I do want to let people know that we're going to move into Q&A because we've gotten a, a bevy of questions from attendees. Uh, many of them have really been answered by you. I think uh, the reason for these questions is many of them that were already answered is that they were asked earlier in the call, um, and some people came on a little bit later. But uh, I'm going to do my best to glean down the uh, the seven, eight or so that uh, okay. that I think. Uh, so I mean, you you talked about uh, how. Well, why don't you reiterate how are calls handled by your team outside of office hours? Out like outside, so when the office is closed, oh. but they're coming to us. Is that what you're asking? Well, that and I guess is a corollary when when your office isn't open, how do you handle okay. those calls? Yeah, 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 sure. So yeah, you're I mean, not twenty four seven. We're not twenty four seven again. Yeah, just focused on the scheduling. So depending, there's a couple of different options. Our system can be figured to essentially when we're closed after ten p.m. Eastern is route the call back to the office's voicemail system, and it just goes straight into voicemail box, or we can host the voicemail on our end. And when we do that, we work with you to to build whatever that recording would be, who's your on call, you know, what whatever number needs to be in there. So. Yeah, but essentially, it really the kind of depends. We'll get you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 if somebody, I mean, to some extent, I think you're flexible enough that uh, it depends on the level of engagement that the practice wants. You know, I think most people that call after 10 p.m. are not really expecting to talk to a live person. But if you're a very uh, aggressive organ or uh, progressive, aggressive professional committed to you know connecting with however you want to describe it, uh, you could also have those calls forward to somebody's cell if you wanted, right? Or yeah, our system would be capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, terrific. Uh, do you do you offer uh, Spanish speaking call handlers? Yes, we do. We have staff that that are uh, fluent Spanish speakers. Definitely. I did not know that. Uh, you mentioned briefly, but someone else asked, where are your callers located? I guess they wanted the, the, the general question, yeah, are they sure. offshore or are they local? Yeah, the right. United States. Yeah, definitely all in the U.S. Most of them are still folks that are in the environs of Louisville, Kentucky, um, but uh, definitely in the U.S. Good old Midwest, bordering That's on right. the South. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you get the best of both worlds. If, Absolutely. Um, oh, here's a question we got. If you record a call, don't you have to let the caller know? Now, I know a little bit about that, too. It depends on the state in which the caller, like you're right on the border. So somebody could be calling from Ohio uh, or Indiana yeah. to Kentucky or vice versa. Are, are you pretty well versed in which are the one party and two party yeah. states? Yeah, absolutely. One party, two party. It, it definitely depends. Uh, frequently will err on the side of caution. And so, you know, when the first thing somebody would hear is is uh, a preamble that would indicate the call is being recorded or that it's flipped in there somewhere. But yeah, that's that's handled that way. Mm -hmm. So in most cases, the, um, the well, you know, the, the, the case of the Georgia call that, that, that the president made, uh, that, that question was Georgia asked. Um, right. Was. Uh, yeah. so, but Georgia is a one-party state, so it wasn't necessary. Right. Right. 
yeah, as long as as long as the person doing the recording knows that it's being recorded. Uh, and so, I mean, that comes into scope for us. We we have to notify our employees, and they they know sure. they sign when they come in that yes, your calls are being recorded and and listened to. So that's the one party. So right. And I think as a matter of uh, of protocol and just uh, of, of, of propriety, the practice should let the team members know and ask them to sign uh, an acknowledgement yes. that their calls are being recorded. It's, and and it's and most of them are. Do that. It's best to do it, and 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 it's interesting. You'll often meet with resistance, and and that's something that I've learned to deal with. Because and it's understandable. People don't want Big Brother interfering any more than he already is, which is a lot. <laughs> uh, right. But but if they understand that the purpose of this is not to try to catch them doing anything wrong, it's to aid in uh, providing positive feedback on the types of calls being received, and really to empower them to be. Of, of even greater value to the office and just to provide important information. So yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, another one is how are messages transmitted? Can I get them emailed to me? Um, yeah, so so a couple things there with that. Um, the, the, the standard way is through our secure messaging portal. So when, when our staff are done with an interaction, if a message needs to go to the office, and we can configure that differently for different kinds of calls. So I have some customers that want a message for any time something new is scheduled so that their staff can see it and they can they can know about it. Some don't want to know that. They only want to, you know, there's certain reasons why they want messages. So that can be configured on a practice by practice basis. Uh, our team, part of their software kind of collects the information necessary for the message and then it gets stored and saved in our secure messaging portal. So you, your staff would have a login for that. It's got the recordings that we've talked about and an interface for that. Uh, but it also has kind of an email box uh, functionality as well. Um, they, we can set it up so that it notifies the team via an email, but it typically will not actually have the message in there for that HIPAA compliance reason. So we don't just put you know the, the details of the message in an email that goes to your staff but an email or potentially a text message would go saying, hey, you have a message uh, and here's you know, essentially the subject of the message and then a link that takes them directly into the portal for that message. They can see the message, they can listen to the call uh, right there just to click if there's any ambiguity, they wanna understand what happened better. Um, and that, that, keeps tr that also has the benefit of keeping track of which messages have been uh, handled essentially by the office so, um, you know, that it, when you have a remote team or a team that's not sitting right there next to you, that becomes important to make sure that everything gets taken care of. So our messaging portal will show which user within the practice uh, essentially handled that message. There are situations where we can do a deeper technical integration with a customer so that email can be utilized for the contents of the message. Um, but that does, that does have a number of prerequisites. Um, and is is designed to maintain that encryption if we're kind of on the same network, essentially. Right now, if they're a prospective patient, <clears throat> maybe I'm. I know I'm out of my depth. I'm not an attorney, and I know you're not. But does, is that considered protected health information before they become a patient? Uh, I'm not. I'm, I I'm, we're on the record here, Danny. I don't think I'm getting into that. That's that's yeah. yeah that's above my pay grade. Yeah, definitely. I don't pay the think so. That. But it's there's, above there's, my pay grade. But I don't think so. Yeah. actually. There is a conversation but, about it, and my attorney says, err on the side of caution. So, you know, that's where we are with it. You are, you are going to be handling calls from patients, so you're, you, you yeah, will need to be, gotta, you know, you need to consider right. the, the worst case scenario. So, okay. right. Yeah. Uh, what is the process to get your team trained on answering calls specifically to the way our office would like you to? Right. Yeah, for sure. So it starts with access to practice management. So we're going to set up a secure connection uh, to your to your your practice. We have a tool that can help do that. It's, it's usually very straightforward. Uh, you're going to create a login to your practice management for our team. Uh, I have a, a staff of implementation uh, specialists. They, you know, this is what they do. So they're going to take a look at your schedule. They're going to understand a lot of how things work out of the gate just by looking at a few weeks worth of scheduling, both in the past and in the upcoming weeks. 
they're going to document all that. They have their own questionnaires that they fill out to understand things. And then there's a conversation between uh, these implementation team leaders on my end and practice owner, uh, office manager, scheduling coordinator, whomever it is that has this responsibility to get us up and running. Uh, we're going to have that um, uh, a questionnaire that we develop for them, uh, and it's a conversation. Uh, and then the next step of it is, um, you know, just like when you hire a new person, you're going to train them, uh, and then they're going to do things that are just slightly different from the way you really want it done, right? And to overcome that, you know, there's just a process where it, you, you give feedback, uh, and, and that's how the world works. And so part of that is our portal. Um, you log in, and there's a call that was handled in a way you didn't want. Uh, you just you know, there's a there's a spot there for you to listen to the call, and then also provide feedback. That feedback goes directly to the leadership on my team. They can see that. They can see the context of the call. They can see, you know, what happened. They can also look at the guidance system we have, that playbook system, and try to understand. Is this a situation where we simply need to adjust uh, the guidance? Did we did we just not know that we should be doing that? Is that a piece of nuance that we didn't capture? Uh, and that you know, I mean, that just sometimes has to happen. Um, but the thoroughness of our implementation is really really the critical thing. The other thing that's happening uh, is that we're going to work to understand exactly how the the practice wants to utilize the uh, in order to configure the phone system. All right, thank you. Here's a question. How quickly are calls answered? I guess, again, part of that uh, depends on how many rings. So, but why don't you elaborate yeah. on that a bit? Yeah, sure. So, you know, if, if you're doing calls in a rollover context and it's going to ring three to five times, so that's, that's you know, 18 to 30 seconds right there of ringing at the practice, and then it's going to come over to us. Once it hits our system, it's going to, to essentially enter a queue. Uh, the majority of calls are answered in eight seconds or less uh, on our end. So let's say we don't ever get, get saturated, um, but 80% of calls then are answered within 30 seconds. Well, that's very good. And these are, I, 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 yeah, and these are statistics that you, you have access to as a customer, so you can understand that. Yeah. Right. Your, your, your regular reports show what the average call duration was mm -hmm. and uh, that's right. The disposition of the calls, as well as other juicy tidbits of information. That's right. Um, and that's, that's right. the other thing that we didn't mention. If, uh, what, you know, as you can see on your screen, this is the offer if you choose to to take the plunge. But but Rob and I are happy to schedule a demonstration of the uh, of the platform for anyone who's interested. So don't feel like you know you 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 should only call if you if you're ready to present your credit card. That's not the case. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I, and but going back to what you know, what I discussed, asking us the, the same questions and others that I'm sure you can come up with. Uh, absolutely, we we, uh, we recommend it. Yep. Uh, does the service work with my phone system? Do I have to change my phone number? I think the news is good here on both scores. Yeah, typically, typically uh, shouldn't shouldn't be an issue. Um, you know, there, there's. Sorry, a little bit of background noise. Um, should should be totally fine. We work with dozens of phone systems, both modern VoIP systems uh, and uh, kind of your older generation stuff. Things like you know Comcast phone systems, no problem. Um, we can work with you to configure them. And your phone number almost certainly doesn't need to change. Um, what we right. do is uh, provide you with what we would call a delivery number, uh, and that's what you're going to plug into your phone system to forward calls to in whatever context you want, then when our system on this side of the equation sees a number, a, a phone call coming in on that line, it automatically associates it with your practice's record and routes it to the right team on my end. All right. I guess I should explain a little bit about how we typically work. That is AIM Dental Marketing and, uh, and Unique Dental Scheduling. When we set up a, a uh, practice growth plan, we have a number of different sources of new patient leads that are generated in the form of a phone call and sometimes web forms as well. And we route those calls directly to your people. Uh, in addition mm -hmm. to that, we do have health partners who choose to have uh, calls roll over to you if they are not answered within three 
usually three rings, but sometimes five, the calls will roll over to you, uh, or after their hours, uh, will roll to you also. So uh, flexibility is the watchword here. We can we can structure and configure a program to match the precise needs of the practice, and we can also change them if the feedback is that maybe we need to make some adjustments. And And that's the other nice thing about your services that it's very data driven. Uh, we, the, the the market sort of speaks, and after a certain amount of time, we have the information and the feedback we need to optimize the, the service, and then we come back and make those recommendations to our health partners, so that we can do that. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we've had a situation yet when a phone system wasn't compatible, and I didn't see any reason we had to change a phone number; just have to forward it to you, like you said. And a uh, couple more, we got time for a couple more questions. How does the service integrate with my practice software? How do you do yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, at Who this point, that, yeah, so that's that secure connection back to the practice, um, you know, and, and we have network specialists that will either work with you or if you have an IT provider, we'll work directly with them. Uh, and what we're going to do is connect into a, a lesser used or an unused uh, computer within the office. Um, that has the practice management software installed on it. That's if it's um, a non-cloud-based non -cloud uh, practice right. management system. So cloud-based, there's a number of different ways, but essentially we're connecting just the staff would in your office. Um, we do have some practice systems um, where we have some tools that when a call comes in, we can, uh, based on the caller ID, pull a patient record, and we actually extract some of the information in real time to put in our callers a dashboard so that they can kind of speed things up. It'll have the, you know, the patient's name, maybe when their last appointment was, when their next appointment is, uh, things like that. So uh, we do that with uh, say, Dentrix Enterprise and Open Dental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You well, we've we've yet to stump you. So uh, yeah, so far so good. <laughs> um, and finally, can your team use our office's scripting? Do your specialists work with phone scripting specific to our office? Yeah, we definitely, what we, I'll say a couple things about scripting and we really try not to, 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 to be super rigid in our guidance to our staff. If there's, you know, certainly a greeting um, or a certain way you want to handle a specific situation, we can definitely put that directly in front of our staff for that kind of interaction, that playbook software that be happy to demo for anybody can show you how that's done. And so we absolutely will take that. You know, what I what we do want to avoid is people sounding like robots and sounding like they're reading something all the time. So we really we really look at what's the intention of what you're trying to communicate, um, and, and use that and put that in front of our staff. Yep. Yeah, I mean, scripting is kind of is an emotionally charged word for a lot of people. I think there's folks out there who think that the script is a magic bullet, and there's people who bristle at the thought of scripts. Really, the, the yeah. professional call handler, they don't really use scripts, per se. They they understand where they are and where they want to end up. And there's yeah. a series of, it's like a roadmap, and there's a series of, of checkpoints that you want to hit along the way. And and how you get there is really the art, the uh, the art of the art of first impressions. And I know your team are, uh, you know, you, you, you coach on that. So, uh, I have Definitely. Got my, my, uh, yeah, unwavering confidence. Uh, well, I want to thank you again for a really great presentation, really information packed in a, in a relatively short period of time. I know the audience was engaged because I didn't see anybody drop off the call. That's always a good sign. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yep. Thank you again. Well, Danny, uh, Thank you. I yep. really appreciate it. And we enjoy it. No, the pleasure is mine. Thank you. And now, everybody, right. uh, just a reminder you will soon receive an email with instructions on how to receive your CE credit. Now, I'd like to invite you to mark your calendars for Thursday, February 18th at 6 p.m. Central Time when our next Practice Perfection special guest will be Todd Sexton, MBA, who will deliver a presentation entitled Your Roadmap to Protect Your Patient's Privacy. Master the simple but effective steps to avoid a cyber attack and remain virus free. That's the other virus. Until then, this is Danny Bobro thanking you for your ongoing commitment to practice perfection. And once again, Rob, thank you very much for a wonderful and enjoyable evening. You're welcome. Thank Goodbye, you. Bye, everybody.